Welcome to Control Talk Now, your smart buildings podcast with Ken Smyers and Eric Stromquist. Control news you can use. And now, here's your hosts, Ken and Eric. All right, here we go. Hi, and welcome to Control Talk Now, your smart buildings podcast. This is Control Talk Now for the week ending November 23rd, 2014. We're getting close to Turkey Day. And I am joined, as usual, by my co-host, the one, the only, the infinitesimal, I don't even know that's a word, Kenny Smyers from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Hey, Kenny, welcome to the show. I understand you guys are running around in shorts and t-shirts in Pittsburgh. Is there any accuracy to that statement? We sure are, Eric. It's a, it's a balmy 16 degrees uh well, now it went up, so it's it's probably like 23. To, we're flirting with that sleet. It's going to get warm enough that it's going to be snow, ice, rain, all mixed, and just have a wonderful, wonderful driving conditions. But, uh, again, no complaints here. I'm, I'm on two feet walking. It's good. And uh, But the, the question is, how cold is it in Georgia? Well, you know, I hadn't been out yet. I'm going around in shorts and T-shirts, too, but I'm inside. So uh, so I don't know yet, but I tell you what, it's been pretty chilly in the Stromquist household. My uh, my lovely wife, Anna, as you know, most of our listeners know, is uh, about five months pregnant with our next child. And our daughter, Evelyn, is very precocious. So uh, taking care of her is a full-time job. And uh, uh, she is... Uh, they're doing everybody's doing well but uh, i am alone in the house thank goodness so we have a chance to do control talk now and uh yeah so it's, it's been interesting it's been chilly inside probably a little bit warmer outside but uh, i think it's probably kenny in the in the 40s uh it was up to 70 yesterday so this week it's been like where you wake up in the morning wow. it's in the 20s or 30s and by the afternoon it's in the 70s that's how it rolls in Georgia but uh, but I will tell you in the you know past episodes I had recommended that everybody get rid of their Amazon stock because I thought the Amazon model was uh, not working well I am here to tell you I stand corrected my wife Anna has pointed out to me that Amazon Prime is the greatest thing in the world because she has discovered that she can order our dogs dog food which is kind of a specialty dog food that she has to go out and get and it's big bags of it she can order it kenny on amazon prime pay five bucks and it's on the doorstep the next morning and time for her to feed the dog so i have to rethink the amazon proposition at least vis-a-vis dog food and other stuff like that i'm not sure about controls yet (laughs) i hope not controls all the way huh We'll be out of a job. Yeah, me too. Me too. But uh, fascinating company, if you think about it, Amazon. If, if, if you talk about somebody that just has scaled it up uh, to the, you know, to the, to the infinitesimal level. I keep using it. What's the word I'm trying to use there, Kenny? I tried to describe you as that. It's sticking in my head for some reason. I, I didn't. Uh, inf- infinite? Infa- uh, infinitesimal. Inf- well, infite- infinitesimal is, uh, I think that's like an incalculable, a very small number, you know. Oh, small number. I called you a small number. I stand corrected again, Kenny. I'm just screwing this podcast up. If I do it again, we're going to start the whole damn thing over. Uh, I meant like you're infinite, and I meant like uh, whatever. All right. So, anyway, Amazon. Check those guys out. They are rocking and rolling. I think the stock just broke out again this week, so um, going to be very interesting to see what they do. But, Kenny, tell me a little bit more about you. What have you been up to? Uh, well, I'll tell you what, let, let, let's go ahead and, uh, if you don't mind, uh, the infinitesimal means an extremely small, minute <laughs> quantity. So we, we don't want to be the man machine, or the, the, man, the infinitesimal, <laughs> that's like, that, that would be reducing me down to a, 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 a tiny moat. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, I did not, I meant the exact opposite of that, so, uh, but we do have a vocab word of the week now on control trends. So infinitesimal, which means down to the smallest Minuscule amount. Minuscule amount. So In, indefinitely small quantity, a value approaching zero. So in other words, when I see my beautiful wife, I need to say, look, <laughs> let's let's take the complaining down to an infinitesimal level. Infinitesimal, yes, infinitesimal level. That's a good idea. She probably say, Are "You calling me a baby?" Actually, my wife's a doctor, so she probably knows what that means. So, holy smokes, I got to be careful. Infinitesimal. So it's infinitesimal. All right, there you go, big dog. Five syllables, six syllables. Holy oh, moly, one, two, three, four, five, six syllable words. So, Kenny, let's 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 start out a little bit before we get to the sponsor of the week. Let's start out with uh, the control poll, the control trends barometer. Let's talk a little bit about that. What do you say? And give people a, a, the results on that so far. 
Well, Eric, uh, it was a great idea you had. Uh, you know, the Control Trends uh, community is, is a very uh, participating community, and uh, you know, you had the idea of why not uh, take a barometer of uh, the business and how, how people they feel optimistic, pessimistic, particularly coming up on the election years and stuff, uh, and in the uh, start of a new year. So um, I thought it was a great idea, but. We have uh, a couple of uh, just real simple questions, and then uh, are you up more than 10% business-wise, up 10% or less, flat, down 10 or down more than 10%? And uh, tell us about yeah, the well, responses. Yeah, well, actually, actually Kenny, it's great. We're getting really good responses on this, and part of the reason we're mentioning this is we're going to keep this poll up. You can actually review the results, so you can see them. I mean, you don't have to do any emails or any, any email address or anything like that. It's just as simple as clicking on the button that, that – uh, that, that, uh, corresponds to, to what your view of 2015 is. And actually what we're looking for is 2015. How do you see your business, your controls business in 2015? Do you see it being up more than 10%, up 10% or less, flat, down 10% or less, or down more than 10%? And Kenny, our results for this week so far, we have 36.36% uh, .36 people saying that 2015, their controls business will be up more than 10%. 36% uh, say it'll be up 10% or less. 9% uh, say it's going to be flat. 4% down 10% or less. And about 13% down more than 10%. So it'll be interesting to see how this changes over time. So please, if you haven't participated in that poll, just click on it, send it to your friends. And uh, hopefully this will be a really good barometer for people to sort of uh, gauge how 2015 is going to be looking for them. We'll, we'll keep this up, Kenny, I think probably till uh, January. It's global, too, Eric. I, I see that we've got people from Australia, Austria, United Kingdom, and, and some others there, so it's uh, pretty neat. So, yeah, why not? Uh, just get a, you know, kind of the, uh, like you say, the barometer, how do people feel, optimistic, pessimistic, and not just here in America, North America, but uh, around the world. Yep, so, so far it's looking pretty good, Kenny, with uh, about 72% of the people saying they're going to be up. Uh, up over next year, uh, up over last year. So that's that's encouraging so far. Now I, I could ask you this: Do you have an ulterior motive here? Where you're trying to show how, if you're involved in the HVAC and you're you're a young gun coming up in the in the business and you're learning some facet of the HVAC industry that you've got a, you've got a good outlook on the economic future? Is, is that what you're trying you to do? You know what? I didn't even think about that, Kenny. But that's a really really good idea. And uh, so for uh, our listeners who might not be aware, Kenny and I, along with Ken Sinclair. Uh, and some others in the industry are on a crusade to attract younger talent uh, into our industry. Kenny and I are calling them the young guns. I think Ken Sinclair probably calls them that too. Uh, but we think this is a great industry. And if you listen to people like uh, like Kenny and I do where, where we were at, uh, uh, Jim Young's Realcom Ibicon, listening to Paul Oswalt, who uh, owns a big contracting systems integrator business up in uh, West, the Wisconsin area. And Paul's one of the great thinkers in our industry. And Kenny, I'll never forget the, the quote he made. He said, basically, if half your, half your company's not under 25 years old, you're pretty much uh, in big trouble going forward. So new generation of people coming into the business. They're innovative. They need to be motivated differently. They think differently than, than, than the people we're used to. But we got to get youth in our industry. So we are, along with Ken Sinclair and others, trying to attract younger people into the industry. And you're right, Kenny, this could be a really good thing is put that out there. If you want to get into an industry that's growing check out controls absolutely Eric um, which brings us uh, to the next phase and uh, we're going to uh, talk about Neptronics our uh, platinum sponsor for the week ending November 23rd is Neptronics winner of two innovation awards uh, just just a manufacturer of uh, HVAC controls electronic electric actuators actuated valves humidifiers and electric heaters uh, bunch of great guys led by uh, Baggio, De Lorenzo, and uh, Luis Malgaras. Uh, qu quite, a, quite a company, quite a story. Why don't you tell us a little bit about Neptronics? Well, Kenny, uh, you know, if, if you follow Control Trends, you know you and I and your brother Dave Smyers made a pilgrimage to Montreal, Canada to go visit Neptronics. And uh, what a great trip we had. First of all, great hospitality on their, their, their part. Great group of people. I, th I say Neptronics is one of the best kept secrets in the industry, Kenny. Uh, they, uh, we saw a lot of their VAV controllers, very high quality, very innovative, and, and sort of where they fit in the market niche, Kenny, I think is, uh, if you just sort of need a lower cost VAV controller, if you're in a competitive situation, this is a great alternative uh, to, to use their VAV controllers. Very well made, very well priced. Uh, so they've got a great VAV controller, which by the way is up for the VAV controller of the year at the 2014 Control Trends Awards. But getting to meet those folks, Kenny, and just see 
uh, their facility, get to talk to their people, see their dedication to quality and, 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 and some of the innovation, innovative products they make uh, was just fantastic. I think they're the only people on the planet that make and have sold 24K thermostats, 24 karat gold covered thermostats, which I'm surprised they didn't make it to uh, to the Control Trends Awards for Best Thermostat of the Year. I think you, you call them the Trump thermostats, so you, you've already got a pitch in for Donald Trump. If he sees those things, he's going to buy a bunch of them. But uh, innovative crew, what, what were your thoughts? Well, I, Neptronic, like you said, is the best kept. So I, I think the whole thing about um, North America is we're finally starting to become a little bit more aware of just how powerful and potent uh, Canada is and how important they are as economic partners and how many great products and solutions come out of Canada and, and talented people. <coughs> Excuse me. The, um, I think the, when we, the first thing that I, I got such a charge out of was uh, that they had so much innovation in history of, uh, you know, they had the first uh, ball valve actuator assembly, and uh, they had uh, the first capacitance fail-safe option for for the uh, for valves. And now it's uh, they're kind of the industry standard. So, uh, Electronics has a great history back uh, and history and background, and uh, they also have a five-year warranty on all their products. So, I mean, it's all about quality. It's all about uh, innovation, and. Uh, they, they just do a good job, and, and like I say, uh, because of the Control Trends Awards and, and, and because of uh, the, the light that we're shining on, the illumination we're providing the entire industry, it, we have a wider swath of, uh, you know, swath of coverage, and, and that certainly includes uh, Neptronic, and, and I think that uh, it's helping everybody. It's helping people with solutions. They have a standalone VAV application. Of course, it integrates with BACnet, and, and so uh, I know that the, the products are very, very popular and successful in our area now. We really are, and they're up for several of their awards. Luis is up for best technical support, and Basio is up for uh, the HVAC controls manufacturer executive small executive of the, of the year. So I'll tell you what; those guys are anything, Kenny, but infinitesimal. Infinitesimal. Yeah. It's it's six syllables, so infinitesimal. Yeah, they are. They, they, you know, they, they are big, and and we're glad we're able to help shine the light on those guys a little bit. So check those guys out, Neptronics.com, and we thank those guys very much for their sponsorship for the 2014 Control Trends Awards. They'll be there along with all the other greats in the controls industry, January 26, 2015, at the AHA, AHR show in Chicago. Uh, you'll be there the six to eight. Come check it out. Reach out to our sponsors. They're the ones with the tickets. Kenny, you know, quick update. You know, we're doing the math, and uh, I, it could be standing room only. We might even have to turn some people away this year. Well, it, it certainly required a configuration change to the uh, the setup. We were going to do a banquet seating arrangement, and uh, that won't facilitate uh, the number of people that we know are already coming. So uh, we have to do a uh, modified version of a kind of a... Uh, you know, we call a uh, reception slash uh, theater seating, but um, all the sponsors will be well taken care of. But you're right, so if people do want to come, we're hoping that uh, we can make arrangements for it because we have people uh, saying they're coming, and uh, and if they're not going through a sponsor that already has tickets secured for them, then there may be an issue of uh, the availability of tickets. Yep, so you can look on, a, on the sponsor page our, at our uh, Platinum Sponsors. They have the most tickets. Reach out to them if you, for example, uh, or a Neptronics customer, or a Honeywell customer, or a Johnson Controls customer, EZIO, you, Belimo, you name them, the best of the best are platinum sponsors for the Control Trends Awards. Reach out to them and say, hey, I want to go see the man, the myth, the legend, that infinitesimal uh, partner of his Stop at the Control that. Trends they, Awards. So, uh, infin infinite, infinite, not infinitesimal. That's, that's low. We want high side there. Come on. All right, big dog. Thanks, Neptrex. Kenny, we had a big week big week on the site this week. Let's talk a little bit about some of the posts and some of the things were going on. What would you have up first? <sighs> Love to, Eric. Uh, U.S. Department of Energy webinar on smart grid data privacy. A voluntary code of conduct. Is that, is that an oxy oxymoron or whatever you call it? Uh, or some kind of a... Uh, Impossible is like uh, business ethics. You know, I remember reading uh, in the early <laughs> days where that, that you, where they call that an ethics, oxymoron. I do know that. Yeah. yeah. So anyhow, but actually, this was very consistent. This came out the day after our control talk. Uh, now, last week, post it came out Monday, and uh, it's uh, so November seventeenth. Um, they notified uh, the uh, community at large, the SmartGrid.gov community at large, and uh, we were uh, forwarded the email link, and basically. Uh, on Wednesday, December 11th, the 2014, I'm sorry, December 11th, 2014, the Energy Department's Office of Electricity, Delivery, and Energy Reliability, in coordination with the Federal Smart Grid Task Force, will conduct a webinar to conclude the developmental phase of a voluntary code of conduct, a VCC, 
related to the privacy of customer energy usage data for utilities and third parties. And uh, so now they know that uh, you know, background is throughout the United States. Intelligence is being added to the grid through the deployment of advanced technologies and grid modernization efforts. This increased intelligence has led to concerns regarding consumer data, access, and privacy of the consumer energy consumption. Historically, utilities have taken a very seriously, uh, a very serious, uh, have taken their responsibilities. I mean, because it's just so, so uh, you know, interwoven with so much of privacy and security protection. But the fundamental objective to save, uh, you know, to make our smart grid efficient, kind of take it has taken a upper has upstaged the privacy and security issues. Security, of course, now has taken this up, upstaging, you know, the importance of the intelligence and, and smart grid. So we've got these uh, th- three issues running side by side of equal importance. Smart grid, you know, getting maximum energy efficiency out of the grid. Security of the grid, we can't afford to have people hacking and shutting things down or disturbing or disrupting. Um, and then third, the privacy is a real issue. So what they've done is they've come up with a invitation for participation. So they want you to email this to your colleagues to the smartest people you know, to the most concerned people you know, and get involved and then, and then be part of the process. Don't come back and complain when something doesn't uh, you know, meet your standards uh, you know, a year from now because you, you didn't have any active role in it. So you know, I, I realize that sometimes you wonder about the efficacy of getting involved in this kind of stuff. I mean, do you really make you know, matter and, and whatever? But at least you, you'll feel like you'll, number one, be on top of it. You'll know. And number two, uh, as if you have the... Um, if you have that participation, you have the satisfaction of maybe making uh, you know, a dent. Maybe somebody listen to what you say. So. Well, Kenny, Kenny, for those who might not, we've talked about this several times on the show. Uh, break it down. So what are the privacy issues? Why, is this, why are people even concerned about this? You give people a little bit of a backdrop about some things that people are concerned about. Well, <clears throat> occupancy, uh, well, first of all, number one is if you want to pay for more electricity and you have the money to afford it, that's your right to buy more electricity. If you're an older person and you don't want to be at 69 degrees or 68, you want to be at 72 because you have arthritis and, and you have a rough time getting up and down the steps, you want a warmer environment and you can afford it, it should be your right to buy it. A lot of people believe that their rights to buy something, uh, their rights to control over their uh, you know, their own domicile, their own residence, uh, is, is of more importance than some smart grid action where we have utilitarianism, the greatest good for the greatest number. So you have that issue there. Who, who has... Uh, the, the, be, the higher, higher, uh, the higher right. Who's higher shelf on, on the on the triage of, of importance, and uh, and who's you know so who's going to control the destiny? So right now the government's won that. So two is uh, the information is being sold, it's being aggregated. Who's using what data for what information? And this aggregation is is a monetized uh, you know opportunity. The question is who shares in those revenues? And and the answer back is that you don't share in that, but because you're more efficient, you ultimately share on your your bill. So, you know, that's kind of take it or leave it. That's the way it is, the way I understand it. You're not going to get any credit unless you invest in a utility company that's aggregating this information and selling it. You won't see any kind of a dividend on this, this new uh, smart grid. Uh, three is that because it's so potent, smart meters have the ability to not only determine, uh, to coincide with other smart devices inside the, host, uh, the residence, like the occupancy sensors, you can actually use this, uh, you know, in, in terms of uh, forensic. Uh, you can either prove or not prove that people were inside the residence based on the energy consumption that would be associated with occupancy. And then the last one is that the, um, you can actually break down, these smart meters are so intelligent, some of them, uh, that you can actually see what's being used, the size of uh, the equipment, how many computers are in use, whatever. So you, you can actually, uh, you can glean a lot of information that's not necessarily discernible when you first talk about it. But I have in front of me uh, a document sent, uh, I, I don't know if I've already read this, but it's the Introduction to Smart Meters, and it's an amazing uh, social uh, marketing masterpiece. And it says, what if I don't want a smart meter? The company's required by Pennsylvania law to install one. Uh, for all the, uh, it, it, so they're required by law to install a smart meter on all the Pennsylvania customers. Uh, when will it be installed? Immediately. They're working around the, around the clock to get this thing installed and get it up to uh, speed. Uh, are you concerned about privacy? Are you able to track when my house and my family's home or my business is occupied? It, the answer was no, emphatically no. The meter does not provide us with information regarding the occupancy of your home or business or the activities of those in your home or business. Uh, in addition, the meter is able to track your hourly usage but cannot measure the usage of individual appliances or electrical devices within your home or business. Now, that is directly contrary to something we've read about the California meters. Well, I tell you, um, I tell you what, my BS meter is just, uh, it's pinging all over the place. So, so okay, so, so to put it in context, <laughs> Kenny, so we're already being lied to, at least you guys in Pennsylvania are, uh, and when something goes into law, that basically means that somebody paid some politician to push it through. 
So, ouch, ouch. I mean, ouch. well, that's true. I mean, think about it. Uh, so, okay, so here, the, the pros of the smart meter are it, it does allow us to control the energy consumption better. So I think it does give the government a handle on, you know, how to man, manage brownouts and stuff like that. And, and I think the downside right now, you know, the privacy issues are pretty benign, right? I mean, so there's not much of a threat. But the people that are really arguing uh, about the privacy issues are the people that point out that throughout history, uh, when uh, countries have been toppled or, uh, you know, people have gotten in, have abused power and gotten in power and abused it, it's always started out with some sort of a benign movement that was going to be for the greater good that, uh, you know, everybody was going, well, you know, we're giving up a little bit of privacy, but who cares? And their point is once the cat gets out of the barn or the cow gets out of the barn, you're not getting it back. There's probably great metaphors you can think of, but it's like there's going to be no turning back from this. So that's people's concern, the, the whole privacy thing, that once they know where you are and can, can see what kind of electricity you're using, whether you're in your house or not, they're saying who's to say that, you know, they couldn't put the, the whole country under martial law and they know that Ken Smyers is in his house and, you know, Ken's been a bad boy because he hadn't done what, what we wanted him to do. So we're going to we're going to turn his A.C. up in the middle of uh, winter to freeze him out to punish him. I mean, who's to say all that couldn't happen? I don't it seems unfeasible now like it could never happen. But I think all you have to do is go back throughout history and see, uh, you know, how the great societies uh, have all eventually toppled. Uh, through somebody taking advantage of a powerful tool like this. Well, Eric, you know, that's, that's again, it's uh, kind of uh, a couple of books that are written about that, you know, and uh, The Brave New World and, and uh, you know, some of the other good books that, of how that, that starts. But I think in realistic terms, uh, I think it's, 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 a, it's a battle. It's a social media battle. And, like, the other things that they talk about is, will you limit the amount of electricity I'm allowed to use? No. The utility will not limit the amount of power you can use. Okay, so what that, that, that's kind of a nebulous answer because the utility won't limit it, but the government might. Some higher authority than the utility might uh, implement something and limit the power used. wasn't the, uh, necessarily the electricity. I, I, you know, it's just all these games. Uh, get, this, this, so You know what it sounds like to me, Kenny? See if this sounds familiar at all. <clears throat> Okay, guys, we need you to put some inventory in on this product, and you need to invest $20,000 to get your people tr trained. And for that, we're not going to set anybody else up in your territory. We've all heard those stories, right? It just, I mean, it starts out in a certain way, but it can go a different way. And I, I'm just an advocate of saying, keep an eye on it. Uh, you know, we, we got a post by a guy named Minnie Van Jack that's uh, somewhere, Ken, maybe we can put a link in the show notes, but we've got it on the site. He is all the way on the other side of this, uh, you know, I, I would even almost could, could at this stage of the game almost call him a nutcase. But he does bring pause for thought because, you know, you, you take two extremes and the truth is someplace in the middle. And, and, and I'm an advocate of the fact that this all sounds great and almost sounds good, too good to be true, the smart meters and all that. So it probably is. And I think we just need to know what we're going to be paying for with it. But the fact, Kenny, that the social media piece that you got in the mail Pennsylvania says this we're installing these smart meters whether you like it or not because it's a Pennsylvania law well how did the law get made and you know and who who paid to get the law made it's you know we could talk about this forever and I think we should get off of it for now well, there, we there was one more point it. that I wanted to just bring up and it was uh, will okay. the smart meter affect my health no yes no numerous studies have shown that smart meters using radio frequency technologies pose no health risk while smart meters emit a low level of RF RF exposure from smart meters is a fraction of the level that comes from other commonly used household devices including cell phones garage door openers televisions microwaves wireless internet and baby monitors so there you go, Mr. Stromquist. So I, I think that... Uh, now, my question for you, Ken, on a scale of 1 to... We don't want to lose sponsors here now, so we hang on. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm just going to ask you straight up about the health thing. I mean, I have no doubt that they're, they're probably the same as cell phones, but I don't think cell phones are good for you, you know? So, well, I, think, I mean, do you really believe... Do you really believe if they did have studies that showed that they were bad for you, that that would keep them from putting them in? Yes, yeah, certainly. I think uh, just like microwave... Uh, as you have, again, and technology keeps improving, and radio frequency, that whole technology will improve. And if, if there's a way to keep things healthier and safer, I think, I think I really still believe in humanity, and I still believe that, like you said, as long as we have watchdog agencies, as long as we have mini van jacks, they'll, they'll constantly keep these people in check. But, but we'll always be tuning into a better uh, technology. But when microwaves first came out, they leaked like sieves. We used to sell equipment that did, we measured the leaks around microwaves. And, uh 
right. and, and if you remember correctly, women were recommended, uh, there were signs posted at the doors, microwave in use, it's recommended that uh, pregnant women do not enter this facility while microwaves are in use. Uh, Home Depot and, and some of the other stores, they used, to tell, they used to give you little cards telling you that in, when the microwave's in use in your kitchen to keep the kids away four feet or more. I mean, so there were, uh, you know, we're evolving, we're getting better uh, with the technology, and I think that, um, you know, the, the, the problem with the meters wasn't that we're not able to, our bodies aren't able to acclimate. And there will be some people that won't. There will be a small percentage that are just like uh, allergetics, you know, to, to metals and whatever. Uh, so th there will be those cases where people will have issues with RF. That's a fact. And, uh, and we know that RF can't be used everywhere because of certain things. We know that English posts that you can't take a cell phone and give it to a, a, an eight-year-old. They have to be a certain age before they're supposed to be allowed to use cell phones because it's a fact they could disturb the device of the brain cells so uh, you know so but all things in consideration uh, holy I, smokes i just gotta stop you right there so you i mean is that just because i tell you my daughter evelyn who's two uh, she's figured out how to get my wife's uh cell phone she's figured out the password we'll probably got to uh to change again kenny because she, she'll get in there and she'll start dialing people and calling them mm -hmm. and blah 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 and she talks to them right i mean she didn't say anything she just jabbers at them because we get calls from people and her cell phone going i think your daughter called me i had a voicemail from her so I, we got to get so if that's really bad for I, we got to get that phone away from her for sure what about ipad do you think they're bad too I think anything that uses RF, uh, but particularly the burst, uh, that, that was the thing I was trying to make. If you look at some of those mini jack uh, uh, videos and whatever, the, the, the one scientist from uh, California talked about San Francisco, and, and what he said was that if our bodies, if the emission was constant, it, our bodies would adapt to it and, and would literally adjust to it. But the thing is that this is a sporadic and it's, a, it's an intense burst. And, and that's, he's not sure if uh, we're able to, to cope with that as well as we can with other known problems i mean i think i i want them i want it to work i want the technology to work i want them to get safer better and i want to be more efficient uh, as a country and, and as as a globe because we just waste so much of our energy is wasted it's a fact and well, we it, do and there's no reason yeah. for it we need we need to get better we need to, we, so we need people to press the, the envelope and 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 uh, I, I believe in the smart meters i think they're, they're absolutely necessary and if somebody somebody's able to take that as, as a you know and, and have negative consequences like pollution, you know, just like uh, with the steel mills. Everybody loved industry where the long, biggest steel producer Pittsburgh was, and then we had the most polluted city on earth. Uh, so that shows you if negative consequences go unchecked, uh, it'll have, a, it'll have a, a terminus. So the idea is to, to get in there, like you said, meet that middle ground, have other people yeah. involved, have intelligent comments from all sides of people that are investing in it, that are promoting the technology, uh, the country that needs it to be applied as, as, you, as ubiquitously as possible and as quickly as possible, and have everybody just keep jamming, uh, what, what do you call that when you have everything, uh, your mash thing. Where everything, mash up. Yeah, keep mashing it up every year. And so these, this thing we just talked about with the uh, invitation to get involved in the, the actual privacy, uh, you know, the, the, the legislation, you know, the, the wording, the verbiage that will be used as, as, as to what will be used to enforce people that don't, that violate their privacy or whatever you know be a part of that you know so hopefully all yeah. the major manufacturers have well, uh, you know and kenny and kenny I, th I think that's the takeaway i think i think the, the really the, the beauty of that post and i guess you know circling completely back around on this i think the deal is now is the time to get involved if you have any concerns at all now is the time to get involved and, and i i guess you know me sort of arguing the other side of it is is not that i think it's a bad thing but i think it is something that you know need we need to take pause we need to look at it and i think this uh this uh, voluntary code of contact thing is something that needs to be looked at and taken seriously because now i think you're right now is the time we're, we're laying the groundwork for what the rules are going to be and and uh so get involved kenny great post i i, I want to thank you for putting that one up there and uh, so now let's let's move to move to something a little more volatile. Let's let's talk about the next post, which was the control trends training high pressure refrigeration controls. All right. Well, that special thanks to Mike Glenn from Johnson Controls for putting on the uh, the training video on high pressure. This is part two. He did the low pressure. Uh, we posted that about a month ago, and. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, you can never know too much, and uh, I, the reason why I love these, uh, these diagrams and these uh, flow charts and, and, uh, is so that when you're troubleshooting, you know, uh, this would be a document I would go to if somebody's telling me they're having problems with their compressor or with this or whatever, uh, because, you know, it's so good uh, to have the understanding, the, 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 the flow chart, and, and just a, I like the visual stuff, so I'd like to look and see, okay, did you check this, or what's your pressure here, blah, 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 but that's a great post. Why don't you tell us how you got that posted on uh, Control Trends? Well, Mike Glenn is our local Johnson rep, and I tell you, we, Johnson just has some fantastic reps. Uh, Mike Glenn and Robert Harlan cover our account, 
And and Mike came in. He calls on a lot of the other uh, wholesalers in the southeast, and and you know needed a venue to get this out. You know, he we did a low pressure control one before, uh, which was posted a couple of weeks ago. Mike's going to come back and do some more, but because of the uh, sort of the facility we have at Stromquist and Company right now, it's it's really conducive for these vendors to come in and. Uh, do some training videos, and of course we put it up on Control Trends. People know where it is; they're able to come get it. So uh, these pressure control posts, Kenny, have been hit a bunch. We will continue with the training videos, and uh, thank you everybody for checking in. A special thanks to Mike Glenn uh, for the great job he did with us. I know. Um, yeah, and, and the great controls too. That the, the Penn Refrigeration controls have been uh, st stalwarts of the uh, the business. I mean. Uh, the load limit controls from Johnson with the manual reset, automatic reset, uh, just just a great bunch of controls. That whole that whole series is uh, well. It's a, it's a really cool series, Kenny. And if you look at the diagram, you can see they've got the electromechanical ones, mm -hmm. but then they also have one that's like like a little portable one. It's just it's just the, the sensor just taps. The sensor's built into the plug, so uh, the the set points and all are set on those. But it's a great space saver. So if you know where you, you need this thing to make or break. You can just put one of those in. So Johnson really does have quite a complement of uh, really innovative refrigeration controllers. And I think the only other people that are really in that game are Ranco. So you got Ranco and Johnson are your two big players there. You know, that I'm aware of, yes, I, I agree. Just, you know, they're quiet, quiet heroes. They just sell, 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 and, and they're very reliable. Yeah, absolutely. So, Kenny, what's this Dick Tracy watch thing you got going on here, buddy? Well, I hope we all open up another can of worms here, but uh, I really got a kick out of this. I was uh, just getting through some emails, and I saw that Intel, MICA, My Intelligent Communication Accessory, is going to be probably ready for this year's Christmas season. And this, to me, now represents the most uh, you know, wearable, intelligent gadget uh, that, that actually takes up that wearable body real estate without a significant uh, you know, issue. So if you're wearing a watch, this thing would just bump your watch off your, off your wrist, and, and you're, re you're ready to go. You're, you're now uh, you're in the, the heart of contextualization. We came up with that contextualization principle. And what that is is that you know, it's like uh, some of the other principles you know, where you know, the, uh, ultimately things go to the furthest level they can, you know, the ultimate level of incompetency, the Peter principle, and the, what other principles are you familiar with? But uh, the, the infinitesimal principle <laughs> is a new one. I just understand what understand, we're learning that one today. <laughs> Anyhow, the, the, this version uh, that we have on our post, the MICA that the, is ready for, I believe, sale in, in the retail stores, uh, is, a, is a limited for free, a little bit, a limited featured fashion accessory for stylish women, but uh, we see a few beefed up wearable si siblings coming in the near future that have shockproof and waterproof features. Uh, because uh, imagine now you you won't need your cell phone, you won't have to have that in your pocket or in your on your side clamp or uh, you know however you maintain your your phone uh, contact. Uh, and your phone, of course, is your your link with contextualization. It tells everybody where you're at and what you're doing and what your preferences are because you've already it's your program device. Well, imagine now you get your phone uh, ringing on your wrist. You're not driving in a car anymore. You're not holding on to things. You're not texting. You know, uh, it probably doesn't have a texting board uh, that, that would be doable. So that would limit texting while you're driving. To me, this is like the most consummate uh, device that's it's wearable. And it takes uh, the lead as a Star Trek -y IoT game changer that will link every aspect of your life to a connected device worn on your wrist. So get your visas out. It'll probably be ready for your holiday purchases. And, and i got a feeling we'll see the Stromquist family uh, being one of the first folks to try these uh, these new Intel micas out. Dude, I tell you what, I'm still waiting for the Google Glasses, Dave, Lauren, Zini, <laughs> where are Google Glasses? Uh, maybe now since we're doing a podcast instead of a video cast, he's, he's backing off on that. But uh, you're right, Kenny. I went down and I got a Samsung phone. I went from Apple to Samsung, and they've got all these big watch type things that you hook up that you can see who's calling you and all kinds of stuff right there with the watch. They're pretty cool looking. They're about six or 700 bucks. And I almost bought one. It was almost an impulse buy, but uh, I don't wear watches. I just never have. I can't keep up with them. But uh, I, I think that's coming. I mean, so is it going to be the watch? I mean, it seems like maybe the glasses are sort of going away. I thought that was going to be the wearable technology. I think I'm going to hold out because I'm a minimalist type guy. That's kind of like an infinitesimal. Uh, but uh, I'm going to hold out for when they, when, when they come out with, like, the brain chip. You just put a little chip in your brain, and all that's right there. So your, your cell phone's in your brain. I'm, I'm waiting for that. Well, I, I think, number one, the Google Glasses are not going away. In fact, there's another competitor to the Google Glass I saw somewhere advertised. 
And uh, Google Glass is doing very well in different countries. Uh, certain police country, uh, down in South America, the police forces are deployed with Google Glass. And uh, and it's just here, I think we're, we're, it ran into a lot of... Uh, you know, you know, people that uh, didn't feel as comfortable as uh, they might have thought it did. It ran into a lot of resistance, a lot of, lot of uh, political resistance. There was a certain governor that took, uh, he took strident measures to, to forbid the use and wear of uh, Google Glass in the state. You know, so uh, how come? What, what was the deal? For safety reasons, or because he didn't want people taking pictures of him? Uh, <laughs> probably. Uh, I, I don't want to answer that uh, with my first impulse, but uh, no, it was the governor of Virginia, I believe, West Virginia, said that uh, you know, the, it, he thought it was a danger. Um, uh, just trying to think if I got my, my post handy here. Well, I could see where if you're, you know, you got that screen and you're, you're driving down the highway and you're looking at a video or something with your Google Glasses while you're driving, that could be a danger. So he might have a point. I mean, yeah, he might said be right here, a, proposal to use Google Glass while driving. Uh, are, and here's the states that I guess have spoken out, uh, New Jersey, Wyoming, New York, Missouri, and West Virginia have sought to uh, enforce a driving ban. And then that somehow they said that uh, the driving bans are unenforceable. I mean, how, 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 how many police have got their hands full to begin with? How, at least eight states have introduced bills that would restrict the use of Google Glass while driving. But the propo proposed measures targeting the company's high-tech spectacles Spectacles have stalled, failing to clear a single chamber. But translation, Kenny. Translation. You want the translation? I, I think they're coming, guy. Google yet. has not paid them yet, and it's an election year, so I'm really surprised that. Uh, so the politicians, they sound like they got their hands out. Because I mean, you know, think about the absurdity of that. You got the glasses. I mean, people are riding around with cell phones, texting on the internet while they're driving with their cell phones for crying out loud the glasses would be safer than you know people doing that on the phones wouldn't it i, I think you have to adjust it's just like uh, learning how to drive period uh you have to learn how to drive with this new this new technology that could disturb uh the homeostasis of somebody that has no uh you know no inclination to use this effectively so i mean you well listen let me just say this that the, the google glass prices have gone down Google yeah. just, just just made uh, its fifteen hundred devol one thousand five hundred dollar device more available to consumers. So, uh, the legislators in Maryland, Illinois, Delaware, New Jersey, Wyoming, New York, Missouri, and West Virginia tried to again step up, and the bills would apply specifically to head-mounted electronic devices. So, uh, but again, it's it's they didn't defeat it in any of the houses. So, it's common. It's uh, it's, it's well, a who's, who's the competitor, Kenny? You mentioned somebody else has something. Who, who is that? Tell me about this. Ah, uh, geez, I'm going to have to try to. I, I have it saved somewhere, but I'm, I'm because, because because you know, Kenny, I know that uh, you know. My wife asked me this morning what I want for Christmas. I think I'm going to go Google. First, I want to say, uh, never mind. Uh, Google glasses would probably be a good thing. Well, there's smart eyewear. Uh, let's see. Um, Samsung has has, has an, uh, launched one. I don't know how good it is. Epson's uh, E P S O N. So Epson's Moverio smart glasses, a Google Glass competitor. So those are the two that I was uh, have read different things about. Okay. Uh, so well, Samsung, Kenny, I tell you what. Let, let's next week. Let's do a post on the smart glass alternatives because I know people are looking for Christmas gifts, and uh, uh, you know I think smart glasses is one. Uh, you know, we talked about the 24K thermostat that Neptronics has, 24 karat gold. So I think that's another one that would be, you know, what do you get the controls guy that has everything? A 24 karat gold thermostat. Well, we, we, need to, we need to revisit that real quick. In, in other words, we went up to Neptronics and we got to see, uh, you know, we have chrome plated uh, different things outside uh, for fire, uh, the fire prevention and fire uh, the equipment that you put outside, the sprinklers. Uh, I used to sell those things back when I was an inside salesman 100 years ago. And uh, we used to, I used to be so impressed with the chrome polished uh, brass or, or um, just, you know, the, the real fancy stuff. It was very expensive, but my gosh, did that look cool on the outside of the building, you know? Uh, now that people are breaking them off and stealing them, of course, but, um, but the, uh, the, the beauty of that, that, that 24 uh, karat plated thermostat cover was extraordinary. I hope we get a chance to post that. And uh, these were used in a real, they sold thousands of these. Uh, so this is just the outer cover of the thermostat uh, to a couple of hotels in the Middle East. So this this is a real thing. This is not uh, a make believe. So they had silver and gold 
covers for thermostats that would just knock your socks off, literally. So pretty. No, they do. They do. Yeah, and I know you've been reaching out to Donald Trump, trying to get hold of him to sell him some, so hopefully we'll get an update on that progress here in the next week or so. <laughs> no, you were trying to sell it to the guy from Virgin Airlines, Mr. Braniston, uh, and, and you said if you need a nest, how about getting a, a 24-karat gold thermostat cover for your nest? I like that guy, Kenny. I think that guy, he's one of the coolest business guys ever. I really like him a lot. I wish I had his hair. Well, he's, he's certainly a successful person, and uh, he's using Nest thermostats on his airplanes, so figure that out. He's a smart guy. All right, big dog. Did Uncle Jesse have a post for us next? No, this is, uh, he, he's been quiet on his suggestions. I guess he's uh, it's probably the weather here. The, when, when things get cold, this cold, sustained cold, drives up uh, the types of uh, sales that you do in the season with Flame Safeguard, with uh, gas pressure regulators, you know, solenoid valves. But this actually came from Chuck Stevens again. This is uh, Chuck Stevens is the um, Northeast Region uh, GC valve uh, point of contact. He's, he's the regional manager for the Northeast, and uh, he put together an incredibly informative website. It's called uh, gcvalves.com, but this is uh, archives for tech tips and FAQs uh, that Chuck has posted on his, his website. But uh, basically, solenoid valves, people don't realize how many solenoid valves are in use. Uh, ASCO has been, you know, over the years, the the leader in solenoid valves. The Red Hat series are probably the most recognized solenoid valves in the world. And GC valves provides a competitive alternate to that. So any general purpose valve, uh, these burner uh, pilot valves, these uh, for oil and natural gas, uh, sell like toilet paper because they're the same quality, uh, same style, same specs, you know, almost end to ends, you know, but they just have a much more competitive price. So, uh, but, but visit the post, but it also has information when you're troubleshooting. In other words, even though this is very simple, there's still a lot of mistakes that are being made. Uh, there's still the issues of what you say too with the, with gas pressure regulators and, and the filters. These things need uh, strainers in front of them, and if you don't, you're just asking for trouble because eventually they'll get gummed up or there'll be some flaking in there or something that will prevent these things from opening and closing uh, completely. So that's a good good tip. I, I love those tips, Kenny, and thanks to Chuck Stevens, GC Valves. And at some point in time, we're going to have to expand the Control Trends Awards to, to um, contain some of the flame safeguard stuff and the burner boiler stuff because there's so many innovative, great companies uh, that make those type products. They sure are, and, uh, and the handheld uh, units too. But again, uh, we, 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 uh, we're, we're growing as fast as we can, and we have to grow intelligently. We can only have so many categories in a, in a period of time so that we might have to divide it up. But you're right. Uh, the Flame Safeguard people have gone unrecognized here. Uh, you know, some of the talented stuff from the Adelphi, the, uh, the, uh, all the other uh, air fuel ratio people, and, and certainly the handheld devices you know, that, that people like Testo make and Backrack. I mean, you've got some fabulous products out there, but uh, they didn't fit into a category. They didn't make the cut, so to speak, on innovation products of the year, but they were listed, you know. It's just well, i tell you what, Kenny, uh, just, you mentioned Delphi. I'll just say this real quick, just sort of as, as a little tease. Uh, Honeywell came in about a week or so ago, showed us their new boiler control offering. It's a product called Slate. And let me tell you something, Kenny, it is a game changer. So uh, as soon as Honeywell is a little bit more comfortable releasing information about that, we will be talking about the Honeywell Slate. But all I can tell you, if you are looking to do a boiler upgrade out there in Control Trends land, uh, boiler controls upgrade, hold off until the Honeywell Slate hits the market. It's beta testing right now. The beta tests are going really, really well. But that is going to, in my estimation, dominate the market. So here's a tip. If you're doing a boiler control upgrade, you got one scheduled for right now, hold off, reach out to your local Honeywell Flame Safeguard rep or Honeywell and say, hey, tell me about that slate, because it is bad to the bone. Cool. It's not going to be infinitesimal, Kenny. It's going to be huge. <laughs> All right, big dog. Well, uh, What do we got up next? Well, this is going to lead into our, um, you know, some of the... Uh, awards that we're going to be uh, talking about for uh, the 2014 Control Trends Awards uh, coming up for the residential and commercial thermostat. But this is uh, round is cool again. And uh, we, um, we've been tracking thermostats uh, that, that, that have been the smart thermostats since they came out. Uh, we've monitored and, and uh, commented and, and provided information regarding the, uh, the battle between the round thermostats when it was Nest. And uh, we, we, uh, we're now seeing Honeywell coming back and regaining the high ground with the Lyric thermostat. Uh, and and uh, it's a nice little article that you wrote about uh, 
that when I was a young person, uh, we sold thousands and thousands and thousands of the T87, the T86. T87F. Well, remember the T86 and then the T87, and then uh, we just went, uh, went for just how many years? 15 years, and then all of a sudden, boom, the, the thermostat world changed. We got the uh, Jimmy Carter and the... And the with those uh, chronostats and chronotherms. Uh, Very appropriate. Jimmy Carter. We went from round, big bottom girls, round, 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 round being cool, to Jimmy Carter, and we all got square. Right. Well, Very appropriate. You needed more real estate, remember? So it changed the whole pro, you know, the whole profile or the whole uh, footprint on a wall changed. It was amazing. Went into the construction world first, and California made it a law, so they came out of the woodwork. Of just, uh, so thermostats got ugly. But they, they did their job uh, before the electronics reduced the footprint, the, uh, the fact, form factor. They, they were, in their day, marvelous. You know, they, they made them out of expensive metals. They made them different colors. They even had mercury. Wood, wood, wood. Well, mercury, mercury, I still think mercury took a bad, uh, took a hit. Mercury. Mercury is, 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 is no more dangerous than, than natural gas. It's just it got it died in the social marketing war. But mercury was a great uh, a great uh, media for switches that is sorely missed and and uh, snap acting uh, isn't as uh, yeah. And they used it for medicinal purposes back in the medieval days. It was well, very well. Go ahead. I'm well, yeah, hey, you know, you could take a can of gas and and and, and cause a whole lot of problems. And, and no, I know. I so, know. I'm so, just saying. I'm, I'm I'm fooling around, dude. It's, no, no. We're having fun. But, but, uh, but the, I just I, I just. Because a lot of people, uh, you know, are, are uh, you have a lot of fire protection things that they're grandfathered, but you know the issues that cause are incredible. Now states can't ship mercury, and you've got a you know a, a 1910 building with a you know 50 year old fire system in it that still works, still functions, still passes its tests, but you can't get the switches in it to control the yeah. pumps. Uh, so it just it just I don't know you know certain things are just you know it happens. So I mean move on, but uh, I yeah. I think that 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 it really uh, you know like halogen. Uh, may have taken uh, you know a hit because of somebody else pushing new technology in. Uh, mercury certainly uh, could have been handled better the way it, it had to disappear as quickly as it did, and everybody banned it. Now I'm not saying take mercury and dump it in, in anywhere or do anything unsafe or un, unprofessional or whatever with mercury. I'm just saying it had uh, just a tremendous history. But uh, okay, so moving to the thermostat side of things, I think that when Nest came in and just kind of just just shocked the world with their marketing tactics and their their their, their networking with the uh, the i i folks you know with uh, Apple it was an incredible thing that we documented and then uh, Honeywell just said you know what roll up the sleeves let's go back at this and, and try it again what feature does that that uh, Lyric thermostat have that you you talk about the technology so as you're coming well, into town one, 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 one of the things that they talk about is something called geofencing Kenny right and what geofencing basically is uh, is the thermostat knows like uh, uh, when you get within a certain number of miles of your house or whatever, so then it can make an adjustment. Uh, it can like bring the heat or cool on if it's unoccupied, and it knows you're five miles from the house or whatever. It picks up on where you're at and begins to take the, take take your space to the desired temperature. That sounds neat. Do you think it works? Don't know. Don't know. I suspect it does. I don't think Honeywell would have put it out if it didn't work, but. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't. I, you know, I, I we we've, we've been reaching out to Mike, our friend Mike Keller, and and Tom Rossback's over on that division. Now we've been reaching out to those guys forever, saying, "Come on and tell us about this thermostat." So uh, hopefully we can get one of those guys on the show to tell us about it because I think it's a great stat, and I know that our community, the Control Trends community, wants to know more about it. So Tom, Mike, if you guys are listening, please. You know, it's like we're only going to invite you to dinner so many times before we get our feelings hurt. So you're invited again. Right. Well, I tell you, I've been reading the um, the comparisons with Nest, and I've, I've been reading about it, and it seems to be uh, very successful. I know they're taking a big initiative at the um, HR show. We're going to see a lot about the Lyric. Uh, so when people go to the uh, HR show 2015 at Chicago's McCormick uh, Convention Center, hopefully they'll visit our, our, our show, the Control Trends Awards, right in the Prairie Ballroom. But make sure you get down and see this thing, because I'm sure they're going to have... Uh, some very, very uh, informative, you know, some presentations that are going to be, uh, you know, very, very convincing and compelling to start getting into the smart thermostats. And again, I'm sure this is already uh, ADR. Uh, automatic. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it is too, kid, because, you know, Mike and Tom are super, super smart. Well, I'll tell you what, Kenny, real quick, I also found a video. I haven't had a chance to really look at it very deeply yet, but it's, uh, it's something that CNET, uh, the, you know, the computer network magazine, you know, been around forever. They do all kinds of reviews and all. 
I found a video that compared that where they're comparing Honeywell Wood Nest. And, and again, I don't know what the conclusions are because I haven't seen it, the whole thing yet. I'll go ahead and post that too so our uh, listeners can take a look at that and see what CNET says about Honeywell versus Nest. Uh, but Kenny, I tell you what, while, we, while we're here, we're getting closer to, the, to the, where the voting period is going to start for the Control Trends Awards. So uh, since we have the, the, the residential thermostat, why don't we break some, down some of the thermostats? Let's talk about residential stats today and uh, the commercial stats. Let's break them down for our listeners. Certainly, Eric. We have a residential thermostat. Uh, finalists are the Nest, Echo B, Honeywell Redlink, InTouch, and Honeywell Lyric. Uh, I think we've already discussed some of the Nest uh, features and benefits. The, uh, it's a marvelous thermostat. It's pretty. Uh, it it's, has its uh, own community. If you go to Nest's uh, website, uh, they, they also have a, uh, a carbon monoxide tester. Uh, and again, Nest uh, is, is a little bit ahead of the game regarding the ADR, and, and they've done a lot of homework. They've projected where things are going to be. They take, you know, they take ordinary products and they make them special, and they've got a, just a, almost a cultish following. And uh, man, you say something bad about the nest to the wrong person, and, and he's, he wants to, you know, he wants to ask you to come outside so he can defend his nest thermostat. And uh, that's, I think it's more of a concept that versus the actual. Uh, but it's a heck of a thermostat. I've, I've, I also saw a video where they took it apart and they said that component by component, they don't know how these people make money only charging two hundred and some dollars because it's got really good stuff in it and it's very, uh, very forward thinking. And uh, oops, that's Honeywell. So. We better slide right down to that red Honeywell Red Link. I tell you, we sell them uh, just a ton of them. The Honeywell Red Link is just moving on. Uh, it, it too has a complete uh, package solution. I mean, you can take a Red Link thermostat and connect it to your house or your commercial building and control a lot of information. Why don't you talk about the Red Link and I'll prepare for Echo B. Well, I tell you what, Red Link to me, Kenny, is uh, they they really make the rectangular stat look good. They are gorgeous. Uh, I think when Nest came out, and by the way, Google owns Nest now, so uh, it's interesting. I think they are looking. Kenny talked about the concept of contextualization earlier. I, you know, we got a pretty good authority from our friend Therese Sullivan that uh, that that's the main reason they bought uh, uh, Nest was they you know they're going to contextualize the whole. Uh, homeowner experience and the thermostat's a big big part of it so but but the red link kenny is just solid i mean the one thing that honeywell has that uh, i don't think anybody else has is they've got over 100 years of know-how uh that goes into these thermostats red link fantastic it's gorgeous after nest came out with their cool design honeywell redesigned their red link so now you can the prestige stat that goes with that so you can actually have different colored screens to match your decor because how they look does matter uh you know you can actually take those things at a commercial level. You, there's a, actually a, dri- a Niagara driver now that will talk to those. So, you know, you can use these things in commercial applications as well and, and bring those things back into a front-end building automation control system if you want to. So, you know, it's uh, really and truly, I think Honeywell gives you the choice of if you like this, it gets down to styling because I think the functionality is very similar. But uh, with Honeywell, if you like the round, they've got the Lyric. If you like the rectangular and, uh, and, and being able to link other stuff in your home via the Red Link network together, uh, that Red Link provides you with a systems approach as opposed to just a thermostat. Right on, Eric. And uh, so you got the round, you got the square, and then you have Echo B3. Uh, Echo B3 is the smarter Wi-Fi thermostat with remote sensors for homes with more than one room. Uh, and this is quite a thermostat, and, and congratulations to Echo B. This Echo B3, the marketing, uh, instead of taking the Nest look, they came up with a very dynamic, beautiful black uh, well, thermostat uh, that has uh, new features. Instead of having the up-down arrows, it has a slider. So you can take your finger, and just like you use with any kind of touch screen, you slide up or down to set your set points. It is just uh, amazing. Uh, it's comfort where it matters, meaning that ordinarily thermostats read temperature in only one room, but are supposed to deliver comfort to many rooms. The Echo B thermostat, uh, you know, it, it basically gives you the opportunity to use remote sensors that deliver, right, that deliver the right temperature in the rooms that matter most. So you, uh, you have a whole different approach. And then, uh, who's our guy there? Uh, Stuart, Stuart Lombard. Lombard. I want to get back to Echo B real quick. So well, here, Stuart. let me just say that the, one more thing about it is that he, he uh, makes a comment that everybody made a big deal about Nest. We're really uh, the, the, the true uh, pioneers in the smart thermostat was Echo B. So Stuart Lombard said that about himself? Yes. Hmm? Okay. Well, hey, Stuart Lombard, we're calling you again. It's another Control Trends Awards. Our community, and we actually sell a bunch of your thermostats. We're one of your distributors. I think Kenny is too. Hey, the Control Trends community wants to hear from you, buddy. We're reaching out again. 
come on the show, tell us about your stat. We'd like to make sure our Control Trends community gets educated on you and your company. So you have another invitation. All right, Kenny. So hopefully we'll hear back from Stuart because he is a very articulate, bright guy, and Echo B does good stuff. So I think they are definitely in the hunt this year. Sure is, Eric. Um, the last one we have, and, and uh, you know, I, I, I think some of the things we're learning uh, as, as we get uh, more experience uh, ourselves with the Control Trends Awards and with the categories, we had kind of a... Uh, uh, I don't want to say a snafu, but we had some some of the thermostats that were listed. We we rely on the control trends community to put the suggestions that they want. They nominate the categories, and uh, and and we uh, try to uh, you know steer that uh, using uh, information on the show and, and encourage it. But uh, are aware that in touch controls has so much of a following and, and the thermostat's so good that they got nominated in both categories for their in-touch uh, thermostat is listed in both the residential and commercial thermostats. Now, I, I can believe it. I'm just saying that, you know, we had some people ask us, uh, you know, what, what, what's that all about? And, and I say that, you know, we, we only let, we let they, they won in the residential category. They were nominated by people voting uh, for them in, the, in both of those t- two categories, the residential and the commercial. So, um, they got a great thermostat. I mean, we all know that, uh, but they, they can handle, uh, you know, a, a large house, uh, much the way uh, that has so much square foot and has its commercial equipment that maybe that's, and it has all the bells and whistles, a hosted website, uh, and it does energy uh, monitoring and, and, and does demand limit. Uh, so the thermostat's very formidable, and there's so many uh, large residences now, and, and, uh, you know, duplexes and, and just, you know, multi, uh, you know, or just large, I guess, I guess cubic feet is, is where you get a, you, you know, I've driven, I drove past a couple of neighborhoods and houses where I've seen air handlers and, 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 and just commercial equipment, uh, you know, is, is on residential applications. So they need a commercial thermostat to handle all that, uh, all that firepower. Well, I think uh, uh, Touch is very much like the Honeywell Red Link. In other words, it can, it can play in residential market if you want it to. And if you have a big enough residence, it makes sense. But it, it really is designed for commercial as well. Smaller company, Greg Fasulo, uh, James Walton, and those guys. Uh, Kenny, these guys are lean and mean, meaning that uh, if you need to get something done, I know we had a uh, – uh, a school system where they had the uh, uh, the trailers out there with the thermostats in them and wirelessly were connecting to them, and they needed a different algorithm in their stat. Uh, this is how we got onto InTouch originally, uh, which was a software development, and we talked to three or four different people, and they were saying, well, it'll be five years or three years or whatever, and they got to promise they're going to buy this many stats. We reached out to InTouch. They had it done in like three weeks, and uh, these guys were very responsive. Uh, the stats score just they do a couple unique things with it kenny they have some other like you said some other pieces built into it so you can actually monitor the energy consumption of a couple pieces of equipment if you want to uh it goes up to the cloud where you can monitor your energy so it allows you to do some some level one diagnostics in other words you can begin to see uh what units are pulling uh how much load compare those if you got more than one unit and and sort of see what's being more efficient they've got some switches where you can monitor like door switches or freezers if you want to uh if you if you uh video or excuse me if you hit in the search box uh in touch our dozier mills has installed a bunch of them and does some great installation videos about uh all the features and things you can get out of them but this these guys in touch very very strong kenny they're deserving whether it's residential or commercial but uh, check those guys out they they uh, we saw a lot of them and they work well but uh what's really important to me and a, a lot of our customers kenny is they really stand behind their product and and the customer support is extraordinary it sure is uh and, and they're just great guys too i mean uh you talk about people that love what they do for a living uh these guys here um it's always impressed me how uh enthusiastic and how engaging they are uh and so and willing to um to help you out. So when you when you got uh, when you need more technical information, there's nothing better than to be able to call uh, a number, uh, get 24/7 support, and uh, those guys do it. So um, that wraps up the residential thermostats, Eric. I'm I'm wondering if we uh, we're at the uh, one hour six minute mark. Do we want to keep going into the uh, commercial stats, or should we? Well, I tell you, well, let's let's push commercial off to next week. Maybe we can get because I think Echo B's up for commercial as well. Maybe maybe we'll hear back from Stuart Lombard and and maybe we can get Greg Fusulo or James Walton to come onto the show. So we'll cover uh, 
commercial thermostats next week. What, part of the goal, Kenny, I want to break down each one of these categories uh, before the final voting ends. So we will hopefully have guests on for you to, to, to learn from and product demos. So uh, I said we move on to uh, the next post, Kenny, and we'll, we'll begin to wrap her up. Sounds good. We've got two more posts left. Uh, we have how does a VFD pay for itself? This is a great post by Stacy uh, from Stromquist. And uh, you know, basically, Stromquist hosted a drive to savings day with Siemens and GA Power. That's a pretty cool thing to educate customers on the benefits of VFDs and GA Power's current rebate programs for VFDs and other HVA equipment. Now, I could keep reading here, but I'll tell you what, I was so impressed with this that uh, two reasons why. One was that you, Mr. Stromquist, now are, are creating, you're kicking up some storms down there with the uh, with learning about energy and seeing how Atlanta and Georgia is a leader, uh, a national leader in all these programs. So tell us about this uh, this day you had there down at the uh, Stromquist company. Well, a special thanks to Josh Felburn. For, he's our Siemens rep. Josh came up with an idea. We, you know, we have a marketing team. And we're always trying to find uh, innovative ways to create value for our customers. So when they come into our training center, we're providing them with uh, – you know, useful information. So Josh suggested we get hold of Georgia Power, which we did. Georgia Power brought their team in to talk about the rebate programs. And we, we talked about the Siemens VFD, which is just up for the 2014 VFD of the year. Fantastic VFD. We'll cover that in more detail when we get to cover, talking about VFDs. But uh, long, story shit, long story short, Kenny, <laughs> oh, my gosh, do you realize that in Georgia – you get a $50 rebate per horsepower if you put a VFD on an existing piece of equipment. So let's put that in perspective. 40 horsepower drive, new piece of equipment, uh, 50 bucks a piece, that's $2,000 rebate you're going to get back on it, which in some instances will cover the cost of the drives, and if not, very, very close. So it's almost like you're getting these VFDs for free. And then let's talk a little bit about how much money these things save, because it's not a linear savings you get off of these VFDs. It's exponential, meaning you reduce that uh, your, your drive speed by 10 percent. I mean, you are bumping up your energy savings by 30 to 40 to 50 percent. I don't know the curve. We have it on control trends someplace. I don't know whether you know that off the top of your head or not, Kenny. But it's, I'm sorry, was that Eric? I, 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 well, it's, it's an exponential savings. In other words, if you reduce the speed we, by we, 10 percent. That, that's a post on control trends. Uh, in fact, yeah. we'll bring it right up. I'll have a link for that one on, on this post. But yeah, uh, once you get over a certain percentage, your savings uh, increases by 50 Fifty percent. Uh, so, if you save, if you, if you lower the uh, the frequency or the hertz, ten uh, percent, your savings is, is that exponential number. And there's a graph, so I, I don't want to hazard. Yeah, I mean, guess. I think I think it can be. It's like it's by by three x or four x factors, thirty or forty percent. Agreed. Yes, it's huge. So let, let, let's put this in perspective. We're all going to uh, Thanksgiving, right? And you know, one of the really cool things about our our industry is that. Uh, and Kenny, I tried to is, is we are really the badasses of the world right now. So next time you're over and, and we all got the relative who's a stockbroker or an investment banker or something like that, who's going to be talking about his portfolio and how his portfolio or how he say, help people make 10 or 15 percent on their money this year, which, by the way, it's been a bull market. So you can look at him and just say you could throw darts at a dartboard and do that in this market. So you just turn over and you look at him and say, well, you think that's good. Let me tell you what I do for our clients. For uh, 500 bucks or less, for in other words, we'll, we'll give you a 90% discount. I'll get you a rebate so you get a 90% discount on a piece of equipment that's going to reduce your energy consumption by 40% on a unit. And guess what? It does that forever with minor, minor maintenance that you have to go in and do. So top that hot shot, right? So remember that when you're at the Thanksgiving table. You guys have the ability to outshine the arrogant stock bro broker relative that's going to be bragging about all their great investments. Well, well there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kenny, because you, you've got some of those in your family, don't you? Maybe uh, not the arrogant part. Uh, well, you know what? The, uh, the truth is that we, uh, VFDs, uh, I got one in my trunk to make delivery uh, next week. But um, I think that, uh, again, it's such an untapped market. It's here we know that uh, yeah, I'm looking at the energy savings uh, that the, the government gives you all of the rebates, energy cost savings calculations for energy efficient products, you know, VFD. So, I mean, it's such a win-win-win situation. In other words, and these things have three-year warranties. A VFD should be uh, a contractor and an end user's best friend. 
a, a, a building owner should should ask his contractor when he comes in, says, do I have VFDs on all my pumps and all my, my fan motors? Because if I don't, I want them because of two reasons. One, I get, I get uh, rebates and I get uh, allowances to buy them. Uh, and then two, the, the return on investment, which is my biggest you know, index as far as you know how much money I can invest in, and is, is it a value, uh, you know, a, a good value proposition? Is, is it's unbelievably uh, you know solid and verifiable? How come we're not selling VFDs? We should be stop everything else and just sell VFDs all day and night, right? Dude, I tell you what, that's that's what I'm thinking about. I, I just I think it's an absolute no brainer. And uh, but I think if you just go in and talk to somebody about, hey, do you have VFDs on this? They're not going to get it. And actually, I think you might have to go up the food chain and talk to uh, the financial guys, because the energy savings you're going to get with with what what it's going to cost them. I mean, you cannot get any more leverage or a better financial investment than that. I mean, you just can't. And which, hey, real quick, Kenny, our friend Mark Jewell. Uh, reads, you know, I talked to him the other day. I think he's going to come on Control Trends. He's actually written a book, but a guy like Mark Jewell would just tear this up. Mark Jewell is a guy who teaches people how to talk to business people about uh, about automation systems and the investments you make in, in your building. But this is, Kenny, just a no-brainer. And I got four VFDs in my car right now, one on each tire, the Tesla. No kidding. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, I thought I thought so. I thought I knew the VFD played a role somewhere in that test, uh, but that is so cool. So it sends the computer sends out the uh, message simultaneously to all the towers to to go to a certain frequency, basically, or certain hertz, right? I think that's what it does, buddy. I think that's what it does. But Kenny, I tell you what, let's put this under the guise of, and I think this is our smart building tip of the week, okay? Because we are the smart building podcast. And what we really do controls what we call the Smart Building Podcast, quite candidly, because we're trying to get more SEO ratings and attract more people in. But we do have a Smart Building Tip of the Week for you, which is if you do not have variable frequency drives in your building, reach out to your controls professional or reach out to your local utility, find out what those rebates are and get them installed. You won't be sorry. You'll save energy. You'll have better temperature control and it will pay for itself many, many, many times over. Right, and also keep in mind there's a three-year warranty by most manufacturers if you use an authorized agent. Uh, there's energy and cost savings calculators uh, galore. If you go into Google and, and type in uh, VFD uh, energy uh, cost savings, you, you don't, you're not getting a spin here because the government has one right on the energy.gov website. Uh, Honeywell has one on their website. Siemens has one on their website. Johnson, I'm sure, has one on their website because it's all very basic stuff. There's, there's, so what I'm saying is that the, the typical marketing glib is not is not really how you sell it. You sell it through actual uh, putting numbers into what you have, what kind of application you have, what size motor you have, what all the boilerplate information gets fed into there, and you put in a percentage of use and hit enter, and it comes up with some very realistic and compelling information. Yes, it does, Kenny Smyers. Yes, it does. Okay. Kenny, our last post of the week, it looks like our friend George Thomas. you got something up on him. Speak about that, if you would. Yes, we do. Uh, I'll tell you, Contemporary Controls just keeps, uh, again, they're, they're uh, I, you know, when I, I think about people doing a lot of work behind the curtains, you know, and uh, some of the unsung heroes, you know, I think our industry has just, uh, we, we take for granted that there's a product out there. That, that makes work. Uh, it makes our our, our our applications work. And and uh, what I really like about it is that these guys here now, uh, contemporary controls, are, are a great site and source of information. Whether you want to know about back that, you know, if you have issues with routers, you know, uh, different manufacturers use these. Uh, we sell their routers when we go from, uh, you know, when we use uh, the different controllers. We need we need a, a router to go from this to that. And uh, you know, contemporary controls is where we go. And uh, they came out with a BAS Gateway LX. Uh, controller now it's available uh we got the post yesterday so i'm assuming it's uh up and ready to go and, and for sale but basically they simplified uh some, some very you know challenging things the bas bas gateway lx uses a csv uh file that is uploaded to it to provide the modbus point list that would be pulled so contemporary controls builds these modbus maps and posts them on their bs bas gateway lx profile page so there's a situation basically where PLC implementers uh, define a ma you know, that their map is not applicable. For example, we develop a Modbus map for a specific boiler. These Modbus points are always the same for identical boiler models. Uh, so that in the PLC application, the logic developer defines what the values will be assigned, what values will be assigned to which Modbus points. For every job, uh, the point mapping may be unique. 
uh, but uh, contemporary controls can still build a map. And uh, so they, they now have a video showing you how to use their product, how to build your own map. And uh, I just think it's a, an incredible source of information because when I went on there, I got to see the Modbus device profiles. And they have all the manufacturers from Airco, beginning with Airco, uh, you know, Eaton, Eamon Demon, Liebert, uh, Lockenvar, Schneider Electric, uh, Spirax Circle, Thermocon. So they, they have all this uh, information uh, there that you can now get the uh, go to control tr uh, contemporary controls website uh, and get their Mod Modbus profile builder video tutorial to apply the Modbus device uh, you know for your job using their uh, BAS Gateway LX. So I mean it's it's um, it's very 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 informative and, and so once you go into their page you just have so much uh, if you have time you can read about their. Uh, the solutions that they have for industrial automation, building automation, commercial automation, but they're just, they're the experts on network communications and, and it's just, uh, they give it away. Uh, there's videos, there's uh, all kinds of support documentation and a willingness to support you. If you buy their product, you can rest assured they're going to help you make it work. Well, they do. And, you know, Kenny, we talk a lot about George Thomas. We met him for the first time, at least I did. Uh, I had the privilege of being on a panel with him at the first Haystack Connect meeting uh, uh, back uh, uh, almost a year ago, I think, a year and a half ago. Super nice guy, but definitely. I mean, you talk about the smartest guy in the room. This guy is just beyond. And, and, and their company and the products they create and the value they create in the marketplace, I tell you what, they are a company to behold. And George is up for the executive of the year, I think. Uh, Contemporary Controls is up for an award. Several of their products are up for awards. So we'll be breaking those guys down. And hopefully we'll get George on the show here in the next couple of weeks. So, uh, but we're big fans of George Thomas and Contemporary Controls. We sure are, and uh, again, uh, so the, there'll be URL hot buttons to go check out the contemporary controls. But uh, you know, basically, it's an incredible gateway from Modbus to Bagnet, and uh, hats off to contemporary controls for another outstanding product. Okay, so Kenny, before we, we hop off here, a couple things. Uh, want to reach out to our Control Trends community. Uh, let us know there's in comments that there's something we can be doing better with the podcast. Uh, we appreciate that. We've Kenny and I have periodically tried to. Uh, reinvigorate uh, the video cast as well where we could do them simultaneously and I tell you what I don't know if anybody knows what's going on with Skype or not but uh, boy it seems like they have really cut ba back on the bandwidth I mean every time we try it Kenny the, 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 the things just crash and all I can figure is they pull back on our bandwidth so uh, if anybody knows what's going on with Skype or has any suggestions we would really appreciate that we, we'd love to get back to the video cast as well uh, but if there's anything we can be doing better, any topics you want us to cover, please reach out in comments, and we really appreciate everybody listening. So uh, with that, Kenny, uh, I'll just say uh, let's wish everybody a very, very happy Thanksgiving. That's coming up this Thursday, and I'm heading out of town Monday, uh, so I'll be out. And But we will be posting on Control Trends this week, and we'll be live next week again on Control Talk now. So, Kenny, anything you want to say before we hop off? No, just uh, we wish everybody uh, happy holidays. Have a great Thanksgiving, and uh, go Steelers! No, just kidding. No, they go had, Steelers. They have a yeah, they have a, they, they have a bye Falcons. week. They have a bye week. So I mean, Falcons. Falcons are two games under five hundred and are in first place. Go figures. So, uh, <laughs> so I guess that's something to be thankful for, Kenny. But uh, got a lot to be thankful for, and uh, we really appreciate all our listeners. So with that, Kenny Smyers. That's another week of Control Talk. Now the Smart Buildings Podcast for the week ending. November 24th, 2014. I'm Eric Stromquist. He's the man, the myth, the legend, Ken Smyers. Have a great week and stay in control. Indeed, Eric. Indeed, Kenny Smyers.